Hey, 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 what is up, everybody? Welcome to another Monday with Brown Girls Glow Live. I am your host, Mia Hall, and I'm so happy to be with you tonight. So today, I'm gonna talk about the fear of missing out by getting focused. We will just show you what's going on here. This is my topic, getting over FOMO with focus, okay? So I know that, you know, with social media and just with unlimited access to the world at our fingertips with the power of the internet, there can be a fear of missing out. Before times like today, you know, there could have been something happening and nobody would have known the difference. But now you can, of course, by choice, see it all over social media. And today I am just continuing the series of Brown Girls Glow Live. So, of course, with Brown Girls Glow, we want to help young women, young teenage women to give, lead, own, and write their destiny. I believe that those four things uh, giving, leading, owning, writing, all helped me to go from the hood to Harvard and do a lot more. And that's what I want to encourage other young girls to do and give them the skills to be able to do so. So every Monday, I will be going live, just talking about different topics, speaking to different brown women, and just encouraging these young women, empowering them, educating them, and exposing them to careers and just insights that they can use in order to fulfill their dreams. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so let's get started. Remember to like, share, and comment on this video if you're watching on YouTube, the replay to this, or even if you're watching on Instagram, I'm gonna keep it up here for a few hours. So, you know, um, just share some insights. How do you stay focused when, you know, you know that there's something that you could have gone to and, you know, you couldn't make it, whether it was financial reasons, whether it was because, you know, lack of planning, whether it was because, you know, you just, you just missed it or you just didn't know about it and you didn't find out until you saw it on the internet. That happens to us a lot of times. Um, I have a friend, you know, that was talking about Beyonce in Dubai, you know, wishing that she was hanging out with Blue Ivy and Beyonce. So, you know, that could have been you. But, you know, listen, we can get over the fear of missing out. Why? Because we can get focused. That same friend is now at home. She's uh, preparing to celebrate a birthday, another year around the sun. And guess what? she is focused okay so that's what i want to talk about today so my the thing that i missed out on or that i i feel like i missed out on which you know i was about to just drop everything and go and and i had actually i think i saw maybe two weeks ago that it was going on so i could have you know tried to plan around it but um i did recently start a new role so i didn't want to exactly you know, just take a trip um, three weeks into a new position. So I decided to stay back um, and not go to, drum roll please, Sundance Film Festival <laughs> 2023. Now, I'll tell you a little bit of history. It's very little bit. Um, I love Sundance Film Festival. I've been hearing about it since I've wanted to get into film. Mm, of course, I heard that Gina Prince Bithwood, my favorite director um, and writer, um, she, of course, went from USC uh, to Sundance Film Institute's um, program where they helped her to develop the film. One of my favorites love and basketball probably my favorite film honestly but but yeah so since i found out that she went in that program um i really wanted to be in it in 2008 my dad applied for sundance film institute and we didn't get in to the program we didn't really get feedback as to why but you know we were just starting out we had took like one screenwriting class together 
in New York, Gotham um, Screenwriting. And, you know, we didn't our, um, we didn't get accepted. And so, ever since then, I wouldn't say ever since then, because I've been in sports a lot, um, or but I was chose sports for 10 years. So, really, that was in 2008. In 2008, I was working at the High School of Sports Management. What's up, cuz? And I was focused on sports because I knew, like, during the time that I graduated from with my master's degree from Harvard, I couldn't find a job for a year. And I finally found a role. Well, a role found me at the WNBA. And so sports was really the first area that I went into before I went into education. I knew I had an interest in film because I saw how movies like Boys in the Hood and um, you know, even 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 um Love and Basketball, you know, had inspired me. So I wanted to get into that genre, but I was like, you know, what should I really do? Like praying about it. And I had a coach, Sonia, Sonia White um, was my coach. Sonia Denise um, was my coach. And she helped me to hone down on what it is I really wanted to do or what it is I should do, at least for the next few years. Like starting out early in my career, I met her um, in, during my master's program. And she said to focus on the areas that you potentially want to go in for like, you know, two to three weeks at a time, pray about it, you know, only focus on those things, you know, for, for a set of time and then see which one emerges as where, you know, you believe God is telling you to go. So the three things were education and doing my own business, um, sports management or sport management and film, film and entertainment. And so I did though I did that I focused on film for two weeks I focused on sports for two weeks I focused on education for two weeks I had a business phenomenon education services and it was fun phenomenon education services so funny but we helped to turn study tools into music and so once I did that um, I really felt like once I did those chunks of time and praying and volunteering in those areas, really focusing on those areas, talking to people that were in those areas, this had to be when I was about 24 years old. I emerged with sports. And so I didn't do film and TV anymore. I had a film internship actually on the movie Brooklyn to Manhattan. Eric Ross, Diana Ross's son was in that film and it was directed by Jesse Torero. So, you know, and that, and I always, well, at least for a long time, I said that, you know, that was like my favorite job, like, you know, just being in film, being, we weren't even on set, we were in the production office, but, you know, going there, whether, I think it was like three, two or three times a week, was an amazing experience and one that I'll never forget and one that I always said I'm going to go back to. So I worked in sports for 10 years. I worked, like I said, I worked at the WNBA, then I worked at the high school of sports management. Hey, Carlita. And then um, I continued in sports. I worked for the Brooklyn Nets and Barclays Center in 2012, left there in 2016. Um, and in 2016, that's when I knew I wanted to focus back on media. And so I left the Nets. <laughs> What's up, Jay? I left the Nets and went to NBC BLK. And then, you know, moved to LA in 2017. I'm saying, you know, but only because I talked about it on my live last week, but, um, but I moved to LA and that's when I wanted to get into film and TV. So in 2017, um, I mean, 2018 worked for the Steve Harvey show back on set. Okay, great. You know, <laughs> film and TV. Then the show gets taken off the air. Now I'm talking about FOMO. I'm still talking about FOMO here, but you know, but it was like, okay, film and TV. And then, you know, the plan just shifted. The plan shifted and the plan shifted. And it hasn't shifted back to full-time film and TV as of yet. Um, so I didn't work for the show. I was going to work for Family Guy. I got a job with Family Guy. I literally was going to be a receptionist there until I moved up the ranks to, you know, to whatever. I, they told me I could have been a PA or receptionist. I said, 
for some reason I chose receptionist because I was like, cause they were talking about getting lunches and I know you have to do that, but I was just like, uh, I'd rather like, they was, the receptionist role just seemed like it was cool because you could meet people, you could decorate the office. I don't know. I was just like, I wanted to be in TV. Anyway, but also, wow, Johnny Bailey, what up? Um, so also, um, I wanted to be in film and TV, but Steve Harvey Global had invited me to come back and work on the educational side. So, and they were paying me more. So I went for that check. I'm not gonna lie, I did go for the check. I went for the money. Um, and, and, but also I knew the Steve Harvey, you know, global family. And so I stayed, I stayed there with Baldwin Powers. And it was great. I mean, you know, I did enjoy it. And then 2020 hit and he didn't let anybody go. You know, he didn't furlough anybody, you know, like everybody kept their job. So I was, I was happy about that. You know, I was able to save up, you know, I wouldn't be in the home I'm in now. Um, likely because of that. So, um, so yeah, so that was a good move. And recently I joined the foundation. So, you know, um, so all, all of this time, all this to say, um, that film is still on my mind. I still would like to make parables from the projects, you know, that, that is inspired by my dad and I's story. And I still, the plan is to still make that a movie. Um, it's not gonna be called parables from the projects, most likely. Uh, that might be a documentary of sorts at one point, but you know it's going to be a feature film. And like I said, or like I started out saying, the goal is to go to Sundance, to go to film festivals, to meet people, you know, in the industry, to you know, um, to to work with them, to work on different projects, film projects, because I believe that I can fight for social justice through the medium of film and television. So that's that's the goal. Um, and so, you know, Sundance was big and being able to go was big. And I was planning to go with my friend LaVonda and, you know, just, I looked, I looked like two weeks ago, like, wait, this is in two weeks. Like, how is this? So, you know, so I did, I did, I did miss out, you know, like the fear of missing out. I did miss out, but it is inspiring me to focus. It's inspiring me to get more focused on my film and TV projects. It's inspiring me to get this proposal done to get my deck done to get my pitch deck done to make sure that I have all my ducks in a row so that if I see any of these people that were you know that were at Sundance because Atlanta that's a big spot for film and entertainment you can see you know anybody you know you might meet a producer you know at a coffee shop so I just want to be ready and so it is inspiring me to be ready so that's what you have to do make sure that you are studying practicing and observing even if you have to be at home right you won't you can get over your FOMO right people are still there something that still goes on to the 29th but how am I getting over my FOMO not only by, not only by living vicariously through people that are there and updating their stories and things like that yes you have to be ready like Carla says but I'm also you know listening to um, YouTube videos right the, they have tons of videos on YouTube on, you know, filmmaking and screenwriting and directing and anything that you want to do. So I'm getting focused on that studying and practicing, right? I want to um, give back, right? I, I tell my girls to give back. And that's why I'm doing this live series, because I want to give back. I want to sow seeds, you know, um, in the direction of giving because not because somebody did it for me right and i really owe it to the world they uh muhammad ali they said right said that charity or, or you know um generosity and you know charitable giving is the rent you pay for living on earth right and so i want to do that right so you got to make sure you study practice observe and give like i said so i'm giving back through this platform through you know mentoring young girls um now that is you know really my role um, as director of programs to um, to really give back to the community. And one of our programs is Girls Who Rule the World. So making sure that they are straight, uh, making sure that scholarships are disseminated, all of those things. But, you know, as, as far as um, observing, like I said, um, you know, YouTube is out there. And now I can also see events um, that are happening in the Atlanta area. I can easily observe there and practicing, practicing. This is practice, you know? So that's study, observe. I mean, study, practice, and observe, 
These are three things um, my pastor, Dr. Ebenar, used to talk about. And I think it's essential for staying focused, right? Study, practice, observe. Remember those three words, study, practice, observe. And you will be able to accomplish your biggest dreams, right? Stay consistent with it. Stay consistent with it. Did I, you know, um, have all the energy at, you know, 1030 to go on live tonight? No. Admittedly, no. But I knew that I wanted to go live because I said that every Monday I am going (laughs) to go live. I want to give back to my community. I want to help young brown girls. I want to create content. I want to share, you know, what I've learned over the past 15, 16 years um, working, you know, working in media, working in education, working in, you know, film and TV. And so, of course, if anybody ever has any questions, you know, feel free to, you know, DM me. Feel free to send me a message, send me a note. Um, If you want to support Brown Girls Glow, there's a link in our bio for Brown Girls Glow um, 19, you know, on PayPal. You can support us. Uh, But, you know, until then, stay focused. You can get over FOMO, you know. You can get over FOMO by getting focused because 2023, we're at the beginning, okay? We're at the beginning. There's still about... 48 weeks left, right? If this is the last week, there's still 48 weeks for you to make 2023 fantastic, all right? Keep that in mind. Yes, Jay, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, brother. But um, but yeah, y'all, all right? So I'm signing out, signing off. This is a quick live, but I just wanted to come on and encourage you. Look, you got this. Let's make it happen, Captain, all right? Love y'all. Peace. Make sure y'all follow Brown Girls Glow 19. Follow me at Mia underscore Hall 19. And make sure you're following your dreams. Keep elevating, y'all.